From the Rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, In the rafters of Rupp Arena, multiple banners and jerseys decorate the overhead beams, honoring eight national championships, 17 Final Fours, and many celebrated All-Americans who've helped define the overall success of the University of Kentucky basketball program. The names on the jerseys represent a select group of players, coaches, and an announcer, and an equipment manager who've led the blue and white through the greatest moments of Wildcat basketball history. Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Macy. Throughout the Rafters of Rupp series, we'll hear from some of the most beloved Kentucky legends whose jerseys hang from the Rafters of Rupp. In our season's first episode, I sat down with Rick Roby. At 6'10", Rick stands out as one of Kentucky's greatest all-time inside players. Rick was agile, mobile, and could really run the floor. His signature left-handed half-hook was almost unstoppable. Rick and I start out our conversation discussing how and when he developed his love for the game of basketball. Rick then shared memories from his childhood and details the high school recruiting process that brought him to the University of Kentucky. Well, really, my interest started when I lived in Kodiak, Alaska. Uh, during the winter time, it was so cold, so the only thing you could do is really go to the gym. And we lived on a naval base. The Marines on that base, uh, I used to get in ball games with them. And uh, even though I was only uh, seven and eight years old, I was a pretty good sized seven and eight year old and got knocked around. And that's probably where I really started playing basketball originally. I lived in Alaska for two and a half years. Then we moved to New Orleans when I was going into the sixth grade and lived there until I came up here in Kentucky in 1974. Well, I lost my mother to cancer when I was uh, nine years old. So my dad was a you know big role model to me. And throughout my whole career, he was able to uh, just follow me game by game because he was in charge of the Southeastern region for naval intelligence and he had offices at all the different towns that we uh, had where we played so he was able to come to about every game. I think he only maybe missed one game in my career at Kentucky. My junior year after that that's when the letters started rolling in and you know I pretty much narrowed it down to two schools pretty quickly between Notre Dame and Kentucky. I think the big decision maker for me deciding on Kentucky they already had a great nucleus of Grevy, Guyatt, Flynn, Connors, Hale, that group. And they had already signed Jack James and Mike and Danny Hall. So I said, man, this is probably a great young crop coming in with an older crop. Uh, and I felt like we could get something done. Uh, Jim Hatfield recruited me. He was probably at just about every one of my games my senior year. And uh, then Coach Hall got involved late in the game, came down, I think, at least two or three times. Once I decided between Notre Dame and Kentucky, I told my dad I really wanted to make a visit up there to meet the players, and uh, I made a second visit, and that's when I, Jerry Hale was my host for the weekend, and that's when I got to meet everybody, and that's when I really made the final decision. Once at Kentucky, Rick had to prove to the coaching staff that he could round himself into playing condition. Yeah, I was a big guy coming in here. I weighed 265 pounds and I had a lot of baby fat on me. Uh, but Coach Hall, he put us through, you know, our 220s and running distance and the weightlifting. If we wouldn't have had that conditioning and weight program, I would have never had the success that I had, you know, because the key thing for my success was being able to run the floor and being able to, you know, to just outrun people. Mentally, it made you know that you were in as good a shape as anybody on the floor. And when it got down to crunch time, it wasn't be, gonna be because I was fatigued or tired. I could play, you know, three overtimes and still not be tired. Uh, and I knew I could out 
condition any player I was playing against uh, because I know what I put my, myself through. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Rick Roby right after these words from our sponsors. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. Rick worked his way into the lineup alongside four senior starters early in his freshman year. He talked about his role in the 75 team and explained how an early season matchup introduced him to the intensity of Division I basketball. Uh, I think the thing that comes back to me the most is the first road game. We went up to Indiana in Bloomington and Indiana was ranked number one in the country. And I can remember the night before I'm laying in bed here, I'm going against Ken Benson, who's supposedly one of the better centers in the country. And, I said, well, what do I do? Do I go out and talk a lot of stuff? Or do I go out and try to just beat him because I'm more talented? Or what do I do? So I decided I was going to talk a lot of stuff. And I can remember I was playing weak side defense, and I hadn't quite learned how to do that yet. And I was looking back, looking this way, looking that way. And all of a sudden, I look this way, and Ken Benson totally knocks me flat on the ground. I think we got beat by 25, 26 points. And it was an eye-opener for us. We were able to uh, really learn from that game, and I think it made us a better team. And I think that's the game where Bobby Knight and Coach Hall got into it at midcourt, and Lynn Nance went after Bobby Knight, Coach Nance. Uh, so uh, it was just, uh, I think it was our wake-up call. Rick has always had an outgoing personality. Even as a freshman, he had no trouble hosting recruits on their official visits to the UK campus. Listen as Rick shares the story of one particular high school recruit who came to Lexington to check out the exalted Kentucky basketball program in the winter of 1975. You know, Coach Hall says, we got this great guard out of Purdue, Indiana, Kyle Macy coming in town. Would you mind hosting him? I said, no, no problem, Coach. I'll host him. And I can remember we had a bad snowstorm, and uh, we were coming up Rose Avenue, and we kind of got stuck, and I said, Kyle, get out. Why don't you get out of the car and push me up the hill and help us get out of the snow? And then all of a sudden, I find out Kyle's going to Purdue, Indiana. I said, well, he probably went to Purdue, Indiana, because it made him push the car out of the snow. But uh, all I can say is Kyle made a real wise decision the next year to come back to Kentucky. Rick averaged over 10 points per game his freshman year and led the team in rebounding. His enforcer mentality and the inside presence was exactly what this team needed as they headed into a rematch against the number one ranked Indiana Hoosiers with a trip to the Final Four on the line. You know, they were already ranked number one. They were undefeated, I think, at the time. And uh, everywhere you went, you know, they were sure in to go to the Final Four. And I think because of what happened to us earlier in the season, you know, Coach Hall really got us mentally and physically ready to play against them. Uh, I think we went in there with a lot of hunger and a lot of, you know, we were gonna we were gonna rough them up as much as we could. I can remember uh, Flynn and Connor, and plus Gravy, they really stepped up the three of them and uh, had wonderful games that day. Unbelievable! The rock coming home on every overpass or Kentucky fans. And uh, I can remember coming back to Lexington, just thousands of people, uh, what support. And uh, it launched us to be able to go out to California for the Final Four. You know, we played a, a very good Syracuse team and we were able to beat them in the semifinals. And then going into the final game, 24 hours before that, John Wooten decides he's going to retire, and this is his final game, and we're all going, oh, Lord, we're going to have to play really good to beat him tomorrow because uh, with him retiring, they're going to want him to go out on a, on a real high. So uh, no, we did end up losing it, and I just think we maybe got a little too wrapped up in all the hoopla out in San Diego and maybe wasn't focused the way we needed to be focused uh, 
to win a championship. But I think it was a, a lesson that uh, benefited our freshman group later on in our career. We'll be right back with more from the Rafters of Rupp right after these words from our sponsors. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. After averaging over 15 points per game through the first 12 games of his sophomore campaign, Roby suffered a season-ending knee injury at Alabama. Roby watched in street clothes as the Cats brought home an NIT championship in 1976. Rick's junior year started out filled with promise. Rick was healthy, and with most of the starters returning, the Cats had their sights set on the big prize. Going into our junior year, I really felt like we could win it all. Uh, I think we had that good a team. We had enough depth uh, and enough experience. I can just remember having 23,500 people packed in there and uh, going out on that floor for the first time. And if I recall, we played Wisconsin was the opening game. And I still have a photograph of uh, make, getting the first tip ball, making the first free throw, and making the first basket in Rupp Arena. And I have photographs of those three things. And it's something, you know, I can take to my grave with me. Uh, you know, knowing that I was able to accomplish that, uh, that opening game in Rupp. You know, you got the Ernie Bernie show there. They were probably one of the greatest uh, twosomes I ever had to play against. Uh, Bernard King was uh, probably one of the best post-up small forwards in the game, or big forward, however you want to call him. Uh, and then Ernie Grumfield, as far as a jump shot, uh, I think one game against us, he had 42 points. Uh, they were just a great twosome and hard to handle. Uh, it was just a bright orange, and they were always throwing those rotten oranges when you enter the stadium. I mean, it was just a loud, ugly place. <laughs> that North Carolina game, it was uh, a game that we probably should have won because we had a great running team. Uh, but back then, we didn't have the shot clock. In North Carolina, anytime they got a lead on a team of our caliber, they always four-cornered it. And they went into a stall game on us uh, when they had an eight or nine point lead, I think, on us. And uh, they were able to make 35 out of 36 free throws on us that game. And we got real close to uh, coming back. I think we were within four points and we missed a shot, and I went after a rebound, and Kuster got the rebound, so the only thing I could do is foul him, and I fouled him hard. Uh, and I can remember Dean Smith coming off the bench, walking all the way down the floor and getting in my face, and you can see in the film, I pushed him away, and you know, he had some choice comments to me. And after the game, I asked Coach Hall, I said, do you mind if I tell the reporters exactly what Dean Smith said to me? And he said, absolutely not. So, you know, he called me a cheap shot, no good SOB. Uh, that was a real stink, because if we would have gone to the finals, it was, uh, you know, we would have played against a Marquette team that liked to run. And there really wasn't anybody in the country that could run and play the full court type game against us. Uh, that was our strength. North Carolina was probably the only team, I think, that could have beat us uh, that late in the season. At the start of the 1977-78 season, the morale of the Big Blue Nation was at a fever pitch. With seniors Roby, Givens, Phillips, and Lee returning, the Wildcats were ranked number one in most all of the preseason polls. Rick talks about the makeup of that 78 team and the players' expectations for the season. Going into that next year, we knew we had uh, senior leadership and uh, Jack and James and Mike and myself. Uh, Truman Clater had a lot of experience too coming in his junior year. And then, you know, you had been around the team for the year before. Uh, you couldn't play, but you practiced with us. And we knew what we had coming back. The greatest thing is we had a bunch of good leaders, you know, uh, from 
yourself, Kyle Macy, to Jack Givens or to myself, I felt like the three of us every day came to practice, worked hard, and by us working hard and being the leaders of the team made everybody else work hard. And the key was staying healthy. If all of us could stay healthy, uh, I just didn't see anybody out there that could beat us. Rick was named captain of the 78 team and developed a close relationship with coach Joe B. Hall. That connection helped bridge the gap between players and coaches and produced a more unified playing group on the floor. I mean, everybody thinks Coach Hall was a mild manner, nice guy now, you know, but Coach was a real disciplinarian, a real tough person. He wanted to win, he hated to lose. You know, I had to go in and talk to him a couple of times. Coach, you maybe need to be a little easier on this guy because he just doesn't have that personality to take it. I was the type of guy, I'd rather, if he wasn't yelling at me, he wasn't making me better. He was one of the tops, uh, just because he took me from a flabby little freshman to a really good athlete as a senior. And not only the athletic part of it, but the mental part of the game and the mental part of life, I think he played a big role in. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Rick Roby right after these words from our sponsors. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. Heading into the 1978 NCAA tournament, Kentucky's record stood at 25-2. and two. The Cats were ranked number one in the country and the heavy favorite to win it all. Rick discussed the tough road to the Final Four and shares his thoughts about a Cats team that put it all on the line to reach their ultimate goal. Going into that Florida State game, you know, we were picked to win it and all that, and Florida State came out and really uh, put it to us. And I can remember Joby Hall at halftime benching all us starters and putting uh, LaVon Williams and Freddie Cowens and all those guys, but they went in and they stepped it up and uh, did a great job the opening of that second half. And it was a big wake up call, but it, Coach Hall took a big risk. I mean, Coach Hall would have never been able to come back into the state of Kentucky if we would have lost that game for uh, putting all of us on the bench. And uh, But uh, Coach knew how we would respond and thank goodness we responded the right way and we were able to get through. We knew it was our last shot at it and uh, we stayed a whole lot more focused I mean, we went and did our interviews and stuff, but as far as all the other side events and stuff, we basically stayed at the hotel and uh, tried to stay focused on uh, getting the mission done and enjoying it after. Well, after we beat a good Arkansas team with Moncrief, Delph, and Brewer, I was very confident. I felt like there was no way that Duke could beat us. We matched up too well with them. Uh, even though Jaminski was a great center and they had Spinarco and they had Banks. But our lineup, I just think we were better at certain positions uh, that uh, they were young like we were in 75 and we we're the veteran club this time. And it, I just had a lot of confidence going into it. And against Duke, it was Jack's night. I mean, they were leaving him open at the foul line for some reason and Jack just got hot and we were getting him in the ball and that's what made our, our team so special is uh, when someone was hot we made sure we took advantage of that we had zero selfishness on our team we did it you know finally we accomplished what we set out four years before that and uh, what a way to go out uh, after a college career couldn't have had a better four-year career other than, you know, you like to want a couple more games, but uh, my four years in Kentucky, uh, probably some of the best times of my life. Rick Roby was selected in the first round of the 1978 NBA draft by the Indiana Pacers. 
He didn't stay there long, however. Rick explained how he was traded midway through his rookie season and how that led to playing beside one of the greatest players of all time. I had played probably about 15, 20 games, and uh, I played against the Celtics up in uh, Indianapolis. And after that game, Dave Cowns was a player coach, and uh, I played against him that game. And he said, Rick, here in the next, hopefully, month, I'll be able to make a trade for you. You're coming to Boston. I get up there, finish that season out, and uh, have a decent year. And uh, that summer, they were able to get Bird signed, which Bird was in my draft. The first year we were roommates, and then we decided after the first year, we'd get our own separate rooms. Uh, Larry and I became very close. Uh, he, uh, without a doubt, the greatest player I ever played with. You know, he, a guy with toughness, and uh, you'd watch him practice, and you go, he can't jump, he can't run, but he just beats people, and I can't figure out how he does it. Rick's eight years in the NBA produced a world championship in 1981 with the Boston Celtics. And after his playing days were over, Rick spent time following his son through his sports career and found success as a top earner in the Louisville real estate market. And I decided to get my real estate license in 89 and didn't really do it very seriously. Then in 94, I decided I'm going to really focus in and that's going to be my career. And uh, since then, you know, I've been with Remax, uh, gosh, 20-something years now, and been the top Remax team in Kentucky, really this region, for 10 or 12 years, uh, about two or three years ago. I've slowed down a little now. I'm in my 60s. Uh, but uh, my son joined me four years ago and really is doing a great job. And He uh, had a real good career. I uh, had five good seasons, played with Tim Tebow in that group, uh, won a national championship, uh, played in two Sugar Bowls, played in a uh, Outback Bowl. So he had a great time and uh, this year uh, he's getting married December 16th. So uh, that's an exciting time for us. Rick Roby enjoyed tremendous success on the basketball court. He was named a Parade All-American at Brother Martin High School in New Orleans. At Kentucky, he was a member of the Thousand Point Club, a three-time All-SEC performer, and named a consensus All-American after his senior year in 1978. As the Cats' man in the middle, Rick helped bring an NCAA National Runner-Up Trophy to Kentucky, as well as the ultimate prize, the 1978 NCAA National Championship. Rick Roby's number 53 will always hang in Rupp Arena. As a reminder to Kentucky fans of his hard work, his physical inside play, and his lifelong dedication to the University of Kentucky. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Until next time, when we hear more tales from the Rafters of Rupp. From the Rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.